Bienvenido a todos. I feel privileged to present my ideas of circularity and the circular economy to this distinguished audience. Circularity has gone through four distinct phases. First was nature's circularity by evolution with natural cycles such as marine tides, CO2 and water cycles, plants and animals. There is no waste in nature. Dead material becomes food for other animals or plants and nature has no preferences. Early mankind survival depending on a frugal and skilled use of local resources. People and nature shared a non-monetary and chaotic symbiosis dominated by nature. The motivation for circularity of early societies came from necessity or scarcity. Phase two, the Anthropocene started in 1945 and created mass-produced synthetic man-made materials and energy. These were superior to natural resources and gave mankind independence from nature. Phase three, today invisible, invisible quality cycles of the material world, such as cultural values, sharing, caring, innovation and responsibility, the civil society now become key players. And phase four is the future. Nature and man will live in synergy or mankind may not survive. Come back to phase one, circularity is built on managing the use of assets, a synonym for stocks or capitals of natural, human, cultural, manufactured, financial or immaterial character. And bodied water and CO2 emissions are examples of immaterial assets in the circular economy. On a personal level, circular society means to enjoy the use of one's belongings and take care of them based on personal values and the sense of sobriety. On a societal level, circular society means to take good care of all assets and optimize their long-term use based on regional cultural values and live from the dividends of these assets. Two renewable assets need our special attention. Water, because there is no resource that can replace water, and because clean water is a necessity for the health and survival of people and animals. Labor, because people are the only resource with a qualitative edge, which can be greatly improved through education and training, but will rapidly degrade if unused. Now phase two is the watershed of the Anthropocene, which started on October 6, uh, 1945. When I was born 10 months after Hiroshima, 6th of August, 45, few synthetic or man-made materials existed. There were no plastic or synthetic chemicals in the environment, not a single man-made object in space, no computers or mobile phones. The world population was less than 2.5 billion people, 30% of which lived in cities, biggest being New York City, Tokyo and London. The Anthropocene helped to overcome scarcities of goods, shelter and food, but also created the need for a circular industrial economy to take care of derelict objects and man-made materials incompatible with nature's circularity. Tackling the synthetic waste legacy of the Anthropocene dictates to close three loops. Loop one is to maintain the utility and value of infrastructure, buildings and objects by extending their service life, the area of R, which is local and intensive in skilled labor. In the area of R, owner users are in charge of their belongings, you and me, economic actors, as well as public authorities. Loop two is to maintain the purity and value of material assets by recovering atoms and molecules, the area of D, which is regional and capital intensive. The area of D suffers from a lack of responsibility and who is to collect, sort and separate use materials and finally to delink composite materials. Loop three is to maintain the liability of producers, which are most qualified to take care of and pay for the reuse of the derelict objects 
and used materials they produced. Phase three, making use of the qualities of the immaterial world. Only legislators can enforce closed liability loops. By defining waste as manufactured objects and synthetic materials without a positive value, and without an ultimate liable owner, it opens two strategies to give value to derelict objects, for instance, by introducing deposit laws and to legislate ultimate liability owners, such as the polluter pays principle and the mandatory take back by producers, a reverse supply chain. Smart manufacturers and fleet managers can proactively use such leg legislation to their advantage by shifting from the manufacturing economy to the performance economy, by selling products as a service through rental or operational leasing contracts, and by selling system performance, railways, airlines, chemical leasing, paper use, our typical business models. Retaining the ownership of objects means internalizing liability for the costs of risk and waste, but also gives companies resilience resource security and competitive advantages. Today's objects are the resources of tomorrow, available locally at yesteryear's resource prices. Retaining the ownership of the objects and embodied materials also eliminates compliance and transaction costs of the linear economy. Politicians and public authorities can promote and profit from the performance economy by changing public procurement policy from buying objects to buying the service of objects, gaining in addition security for future supplies of resources. A successful circular industrial economy is built on economics, innovation and competitiveness. Innovation is part of most universities' curricula. The objective of circular economy innovation is to develop circular sciences in the fields of energy, chemistry, metallurgy, as well as a better understanding of behavioral and motivation sciences. Now, finally, phase four, the future. Circular society and the circular industrial economy enable regions to turn today's three major challenges into opportunities. The transfer to a circular industrial economy enables to create a low waste society through incentives to change individual behavior from consumer to user and through loss and waste prevention by intelligent resource management and a low carbon society by preserving the water, electricity and CO2 emissions embodied in physical assets and through innovation into green electricity and circular energy. And thirdly, a low anthropogenic mass society by preserving the existing stocks of infrastructure, buildings, equipment, vehicles and objects. So what is the circular economy? A regional economy that in the area of R replaces inputs of imported energy and virgin materials by the skilled labor of local workers optimizing existing stocks. It's also an economic model built on economics, innovation and competitiveness. Its substantial social, economic and economic benefits compared to manufacturing result from innovation into new materials new business models, new technologies to reuse objects and recover used atoms and molecules, and an intelligent decentralization of the economy. Ultimately, it means exploring the limits to certainty and facing risks in the new service economy. Thank you for having given me the chance to talk to you digitally, and please accept my apologies for not having come in person to Mexico. Have a successful conference. Thank you.